All right. What a day. Like, I scheduled this live stream, you know, at about noon today, and I had to scramble to get my daily fantasy optimizers done by the time this live stream started. Like, I literally finished my showdown DFS optimizer about five minutes ago and had to scramble and come downstairs, get everything set up and everything. But, um, no, my college basketball model is up and running, not just bets, but DFS as well. I actually have live DFS a live DFS lineup in progress right now that I submitted about 10 minutes ago is the showdown game of the day between Florida state and Georgia tech. So let's go ahead and uh, switch over to the display. So here are my lineups. Uh, if you're going to enter this lineup in, don't enter in the same contest I am in. So go ahead and check, uh, but if you're going to enter in, a, I'm only in $10 games because this is the very first day. Probably a lot of kinks to work out. I'm not going to go full send day one. But um, if you're going to enter in this lineup right here for the night games in DFS College Basketball, don't do it in the same lobby I am in. Make sure you see, make sure you don't see WC lease in whatever lobby, $10 lobby you want to join. So, um that is that, as well as I got the uh, website up and running as well. Um, I'm sure there's uh, already some games ready that are done for the day. I know Chicago State, Illinois is over. And I know Illinois State covered and went over, so I know my model lost that one. But apart from that, I don't really know what's going on because, like I said, I was scrambling to get that DFS stuff done on my model. Um, but, yeah, it's been a crazy last five days. So, Last Friday, or whatever the live stream, last college basketball live stream I did, I think it was this past Thursday, I told you guys, I was like, hey, I need to do preseason ratings. So I put my head down and got it done. I worked on it a lot on Friday, a lot this past Thursday. Didn't do anything Saturday because I was out of town, but a lot on Sunday, a lot yesterday, and finished up the preseason ratings last night. A lot of work. Definitely a lot of work. But um, had to be done. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do this right now. But um, I saw one of you guys had a question in the chat. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, answer that before I get started. Um, Tom Labadi, by the way, can everybody hear me? I just want to make sure I can be heard. Uh, let me just make sure everything's on the up and up. All right, so Tom Labadi, interested to see how your Monte Carlo model is performing and if you're winning in DFS. Any chance you can discuss your methodology for weighting stats based on the recently? So yes, that's what I do. Um, my model does weight stats uh, on the most recent, you know, more recent games get more weight, but it's a sliding scale. So I'll work this out for you in Excel to kind of explain how I do it. Let me zoom in and then transition over. All right, can you see that? So basically, I wait more games more recently. So the idea being over a, I want to say after 20 games have been played, I think that's how it works in my model, that game number 20 will have four times the weight as game number one. So, but you have to play 20 games for that four to kick in. So you do um, equals one slash 19. So you do increments, whoops. You do increments of, uh, so D3 plus F, F3. So here's, this is kind of how the increments work, right? So if a team's only played five games, then game five is going to get 1.63 times the weight as game one. So it's a sliding scale based on how many games is played, but the cap is four. So every game over 20 that a team plays, it caps at four. But um, yeah, I wait. That's kind of how my weighting scale works. Um Based on how many games the team's played, uh, the most recent game gets that times the amount of weight as the first game. But, and you know, like for example, in a t if a game team has played 10 games, then game number 10 will get 2.42 the weight. Game number 5 will get 1.63 the weight uh, versus the first game that was played. And uh, not only do I weight more recently, but I weight the adjusted stats more. So it's kind it, it, I kind of I kind of had to take a couple hours a couple weeks ago to work it out because I don't wait the raw stats. I wait the adjusted stats, but it's kind of complex because you have to go game by game, right? Uh, so you have to figure out – it's kind of even hard to talk about it. Like I had to like literally work this out in Excel for a couple hours before I had the vision in mind. But 
I take a, get each team's weighted adjusted stat for the game and all the various stats and apply these weights to it. It's kind of complex, but it, you know, I'm not going to wait based on raw stats. I'm going to wait based on adjusted stats, and that's how I do it. But that is to answer your question. So as I wait for this Florida State Georgia Tech game to get underway, um, I will talk about the model more. So eventually I'd like to do these live streams during college basketball games. When I have my own studio set up in a couple weeks, when I move into my new place and everything, I'll have the, like a desk and my computer and everything, but then I'll have a TV behind the camera so I can watch games as I'm streaming as well. A TV connected to cable and not the internet. So I don't have to worry about bandwidth. So that's, that's the, that's the plan, but I don't have the ability to do that right now. So I don't even know what channel this Florida state Georgia tech game is on, but my showdown lineup actually has four Georgia or four Georgia Tech players in it for that game. Yeah, including the captain M. Wright. So we'll have to wait and see how that works. But I want to talk more about my college basketball model because it's it's kind of like a it, it can be educational. So what I did is with preseason ratings, it was kind of hard. So I told you the formula. So here's the formula for my preseason ratings that took. The thing that took the longest amount of time was to actually scrape every box score over the past four seasons off the NCAA website. Uh, because, like I said, every season had its own unique intricacies in the HTML, so I had to kind of like reprogram the scraper for every new season, which was a pain. And then not only did I do that, but then like a new bug or whatever, like something like, for example, team IDs in 2017, for example, were three digit numbers max. Uh, but team IDs uh, in 2018 onward are six-digit numbers. And so, but in 2018 and 2019, they didn't fully transition. So some of the box scores use a three-digit ID, and some of the box scores use a six-digit ID. So it's just a bunch of stuff like that that made it a real pain to scrape all the box scores off the website. So I kept having to reconfigure the scraper to account for all the intricacies uh, that each season brought. Um, so that took the longest amount of time because even uh, when the scraper was working 100% without any errors, you know, it still has to da go to connect to every box score. There's over 5,000 box scores in a season, so it had to download all 5,000 box scores, you know, which takes a while. And you can't just like set a loop, like write a script to set a loop to scrape over and over until all 5,000 are done. You can't do that because every now and then the connection would time out. And uh, if I wasn't at my computer, I couldn't restart it until I was, you know, so I couldn't like do it overnight or when I was going to bed. I had actually, I actually had to be at the computer to make sure when it timed out that I was there to, you know, uh, kickstart it back up. So that took the longest amount of time. But once I got that, I was cooking, you know, um, from there it's pretty easy. So I, you know, the components of the Preseason ratings are baseline, returning, regression, fingerprint, right? No recruiting. If you looked at my Twitter account yesterday, you would have saw me making Twitter posts about how I, I measured, you know, I, I looked at every team's net. Here, let me pull up the file so I can tell you what I'm talking about. But I looked up every team's net RSCI top 30 recruits for the past however many years. I actually have this file in here. Let me open it. So um, I don't know if you can see this. Let me zoom in. But for example, I have every team that gained or lost a RSCI top 30 recruit for the year, right? So Arizona gained one. California lost Jalen Brown. They lost him from 2016, so minus one for California. Duke, for example, they could gain four top 30 recruits and lose two, and their net is two. So it's net. That way, you know, it's not just how many they gain. Because like Kentucky, for example, I think they gained like four in one year but lost seven so they were minus three so what i did is i took the net number of top 30 recruits gained and compared that to their year over year change against that number in a scatter plot and i saw that it, it it doesn't really make a difference top 30 recruiting does not make a difference it doesn't i'm not saying that recruiting is meaningless in college basketball but it's a crapshoot some might pan out some may not if I was a coach, would I rather have one than not? Yeah, but uh, in the macro sense that I measured, it's it's not worth putting into a preseason rating model, so I threw it out. So really, it just has three components. The baseline. So the baseline is 
a weighted four-year average of every team's stats, right? So uh, the most recent season gets two times the weight as the mo- uh, four-year-ago season. Uh, that's pretty much the baseline. Uh, the baseline is very important because Kansas is always going to be Kansas, Duke's always going to be Duke, and then the bad teams are always going to be, you know, unless a team catches lightning in a bottle, their baseline is probably going to give a pretty good starting point to where the team is going to wind up when you're doing a preseason estimate. So I want to point out the preseason ratings are not intended to be super accurate. You don't need them to be on the mark. They are just there to provide a jumping off point for your model to operate on. So the adjustments do not throw the model off. Uh, I showed you what the uh, adjustments were doing without preseason ratings on the last live stream. It was pretty hideous uh, as to what we saw. So that's why you need the preseason ratings in there. So when you're adjusting the stats, it's not like uh, wildly skewing anything. It's just a starting off point. That's it. So that's what the baseline is. And then component number two is the regression. So basically what I did for the regression is I took, I created like a master database of uh, teams year over year changes for the past uh, four years and then uh, the x-axis so when you're doing a regression you have a y-axis and then x-axis the y-axis was all the stats uh, over the past four years the x-axis was returning percentage of returning minutes that's pretty easy to calculate uh, so I just regress based on returning minutes versus the stat so I showed you uh, I had that on my Twitter let me pull it up just so I can show you guys I posted this on my Twitter yesterday. Not that. That's the recruiting one right there. Uh, So this is offensive efficiency change, not the stat. Not the stat, but how much it changed year over year. So this team right here, their offensive efficiency jumped up about 0.13 from the year before. uh, And they returned about, I don't know, uh, maybe (laughs) – 10% 10% of their minutes. I'm guessing that's a team like uh, Duke or something that like gets a lot of top recruits. And even though they didn't return a lot of minutes, we're able to improve because they had a recruiting class that panned out. But that's pretty much that's this, this is pretty much the second component of the model. I did this for 36 different stats or whatever. Just plot the returning minutes, rep min on the x-axis and the stat on the y-axis. And this is the regression. I just use that, the coefficients and everything. Uh, so that's the second component. And then the third component is the fingerprint. Now, the fingerprint is something I did for preseason ratings in my college football model six years ago, back when I was back when data was easily accessible and free, uh, to where you could do complex college football models without having to be a programming genius scraper or someone who has access to expensive data. But that's not here nor there. But the fingerprint. So what I did is I created. I basically took a team's returning minutes. And then I, uh, yeah, so I took it. So for example, I, I, I wish I had the Excel spreadsheet to uh, show you this, but um, for example, Villanova, this is just, I'm not even at quoting it. I'll use Texas because I know what their number is. Texas returns 100% of their minutes from last year. Texas returned, yeah, 100%, which is pretty good. Um, their regressions are well. So what I did is I, created a data frame of basically the data frame that fed into this plot, but only where the returning minutes column was at, was within half a standard deviation of one hundred percent returning minutes or however many returning minutes that the team that we're fingerprinting on. So basically I created a profile of a team, their stats from last year and their percentage of minutes returning. That's it. It's a fingerprint, you know? And so what I did is I found the 10, most similar teams based on that fingerprint from the past four years and calculated the average stats of those 10 teams. That's the fingerprint, right? So the 10 teams with the most similar stats to Texas from last year and the most similar returning minutes from for Texas 100%, the 10 most similar teams of that profile, that fingerprint, average all their stats together, that's the fingerprint component. So the baseline is worth 40%, the regression is worth 40%, and the fingerprint is worth 20%, and that's how I got my preseason ratings. So from there, the only the only stat that I did not do that for was tempo. Because tempo is more about the coach than the 
uh, like previous years or returning minutes or anything like that. Tempo is almost always going to be the coach. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that coaches can't change their style. Horace Brodnack's, uh, Horace Brodnack's a great example, coach at Savannah State. Uh, he had the fastest tempo in the country in 2017. And then in 2018, he had, or no, flip that around. He had the slowest tempo in the country for many years. One of the slowest tempos for many years. And then all of a sudden he has one of the fastest tempos the next year. Like he went from like the bottom, the three hundreds all the way to like the top 10 in tempo just in one season. So coaches can change, but until they actually do it, you can't predict that. So until they actually do it uh, in the statistics, you just have to go with their past. And that's why I created a database of coaches over the past four years as well to um, determine their tempo tendencies. And I just used their most recent season. So it's not a four-year average or anything, but the most recent season that the coach coached in, uh, what was the tempo of their most recent season? And that, that's just what I use. Uh, like I said, you just need a starting off point. Um, you probably know that someone like Nate Oates is going to have a fast tempo. You probably know that someone like Tony Bennett's going to have a slow tempo. Just use their most recent tempo. But then you're going to ask, okay, what about coaches who are new? Uh, well, at that point, you just have to use the national average tempo and just wait. Because, like I said, you can't, you, you, you can't be as, your preseason ratings can't be psychic. They can predict, but they can't be psychic. So uh, whoever the new coaches are, like, um, who's a new coach this year? I don't know. Um, I, th I don't know who the new coaches are this year. I mean, I, 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 I should know, but I don't. Uh, but anyway, new coaches just get the natural average tempo. That's all it is. So that's how I did tempo. But apart from that, that is how I did my preseason ratings. And from there, I do um, I calculate all the stats from this season, and then I do an adjustment based on a hybrid of – no, wait. I do two rounds of adjustments, two sets of adjustment, and each set has five rounds. So the first set I adjust off of the preseason ratings only – the, this year's stats off the preseason ratings, and then I combine that with the uh, non-preseason frame, right? It's kind of weird. I, I combine the preseason ratings based on how many games they played. It phases it out over time based on how many games they played. Uh, so after they played a certain amount of games, the preseason ratings are gone from their stats, and it's all this year. So I merge that, and then I run a second round of adjustments off the new frame, it's kind of complex. Like I know what I'm talking about. You guys probably don't, but as far as individual stats are concerned, cause that's important because my Monte Carlo run is all about individual stats. The only team stats that are in there are really defensive stats, like a defensive two and three point percentage. Um, I think that might be it and tempo, right? So apart from that, the Monte Carlo model is hundred percent based on the individual stats and the sums of those components. And so you're probably, I did not create preseason ratings for the individuals. I didn't, uh, because that's just too much effort for what it's worth. I'll, I, I'm okay. Like I'm okay with taking a couple weeks off at the beginning to let each team play a certain amount of games before I start betting with them anyway. And so that's why I have a minimum of three games to be played, but I adjust every, I only do one round of adjustments for the individual stats. Cause you really only need to adjust off team stats. So I just adjust, uh, each individual stats based on strength of the opponents played, um, and take it from there. And I only do one round. There's no need to do multiple rounds for individual stats. So after running 10 adjustments off the team stats, I then take the individual stats and adjust them off the strength of the opponents they have played so far. And that's how I get it. I know it's, I know it's complex. But the Monte Carlo run is based off of individual stats. And so let me go back to my website so I can point this out. So I ran my Monte Carlo model for the first time today. And I noticed that there's one game that caught my eye because it's so far off the line. And it was Stanford and U uh, Cal State Northridge. So like Stanford is number 42 in my model. Cal State Northridge is 215. So I'm like, why is it so close, right? We got to remember... Stanford is number 42 in the team ratings, right? The team ratings. And the team ratings have that preseason influence in there. So the preseason influence is the reason why Stanford is 42 and Cal State Northridge is 215. But individual stats that don't have that preseason influence, it's simply the individual's raw stats on the year divided by the Q 
cumulative opponent strength of the opponents they have played so far, and of course weighted uh, with most more recent games being weighted a little bit more heavily than their uh, earlier games. And when you do that, the teams are pretty similar. Uh, Cal State and Orchards, they haven't played a bad schedule, and they put up some good numbers against decent teams like Pepperdine. And so the, Im- the individual stats against the strength of schedule – and Stanford had their stats adjusted against the strength of schedule they've played, they're pretty even. And so that's kind of one of the risks you're taking it with the model like this. Um, with an individual stat model uh, with no preseason individual ratings, you're adjusting off just the games they played so far, adjusting off the strength of their opponents. That's why it was off. And so that's kind of the thing I'm betting on here. That's kind of the gamble I'm taking with this model is that – I'm betting I'm betting on my approach, my approach. Yes, Cal State Mortridge with team ratings might be 215 and Stanford might be 42, but my Monte Carlo runs based on the individual stats. Like as a as a team, Stanford's two-point field goal percentage I think is like 66% adjusted in my model, which is crazy, but their team, but if you average the individual components of two-point field goal percentage, it's only about 51%. And so um that's because remember that team stat is using is I think Stanford's played like two or three games, so it's still eighty percent preseason ratings, right? For that team field goal percentage stat, but the individuals, it's it's a hundred percent this year divided by the strength of schedule they've played, so they don't have that preseason influence to kind of like boost them up until you know enough games have been played, and that's why the game was so even, and so. 16.5 spread. I was like, wow, Cal State North is only losing by 0. 0.4. I mean, that's why I did a deep dive and diagnostics into my Monte Carlo run to make sure that number was accurate and it, everything checked out. So that's the, that's the gamble I am taking that I trust my individual approach to be better than the team approach. Cause all these odds, I can guarantee you they're set off the team approach, the team, a Monte Carlo run or a linear aggression based off team stats with that preseason influence in there. I'm betting on my individual approach without the preseason influence is going to uh, be better than the team approach, right? So um, a lot of games have been played today already, I know. So let me go down the line. Uh, First of all, let me see how my daily fantasy is doing. Uh, Has this game not started yet? That's not true. The game is supposed to start at 7.30. Okay, here we go. All right, so um, I am in eighth place right now. I mean, I wish I could follow it along. If I need another computer to like be able to, f- I might go do that. I'm gonna run upstairs real quick and get uh, another laptop to put right here so I can follow that along with that game on this live stream. I will be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right, so this is just so I can follow along this uh, Georgia Tech-Florida State game as it happens. Of course, my captain has done nothing so far. That's kind of like how the baseball DFS work, you know. It's it's tough. Uh, DFS is tough. Let's, let me put it that way. Even with a good model, um, it's still an uphill climb. But it's fun. I got to admit it's fun, especially that one night where I – was in first place in that twenty thousand dollar contest for a while. That was fun, but uh, oh gosh, I just remember my heart rate. I had my Fitbit on at the time. My heart rate was like one hundred thirty just by sitting still. All right, uh, what, what what website should I go to to check the score? I'll just do ESPN. Screw it. I mean, I'm sure I could. It's on the ACC network. Uh, I don't think I get that on my. I don't think I get the ACC network on my uh, YouTube TV. All right. So who are my players? I don't even know who my players are in this game. The reason I'm not doing it on this computer, I just don't want to overload the CPU. 
All right. The reason I'm in eighth place is because I have four Georgia Tech players and they're losing 18 to 8 at the second media timeout. And one of my players hasn't even entered the game yet. M. Wright, who's my captain, has not done any. Literally, he has zeros across the line on his box score. He's done absolutely nothing. So he hasn't even taken. Yeah, not zero everywhere. So anyway. But what I'm going to do is see how uh, my. Let me close that real quick. I want to see how my bets have done. So like, like I said, ideally, I'll have like a. a when I'm doing this in the future, when I have my own studio and setup and everything, uh, I'll have like a live updating spreadsheet so we can like track in real time how the model's doing for the day. Uh, but until then, I'm going to do it manually. I just haven't had the time to do that. All right, so I know. Uh, let me go back over here. Let me close that. Man, I have too much stuff open. So we had Chicago State. I know they didn't cover. So how about this? This column be ATS. This column would be total. This column would be money line. Minus one if they lost. If it didn't win, total. Under. I know that game didn't go under. And then money line, I had none. So zero. And then we'll do like a running total. Equals sums. C. All right, Stanford, Cal I doubt that game started yet. I'd be very surprised if it has. Where's my scoreboard at? All right. I wonder if M. Wright, oh wait, he just got a block. That's two points. So M. Wright is in the game. I was like, I wonder if he's hurt because he hasn't done anything in eight minutes. Maybe he like cramped up or something. They had to take him out. All right. So I, I doubt Stanford. Maybe it was. Maybe they have played. Oh, Stanford and CSU Northridge did play. Northridge covered, so my model is at least right on that. And they're only down by three at half. So, um, you know, at least my model is right on that. Yeah, so the total, I had it under uh, 147.5. I went over, so I'm over 2 on total so far. Like I said, this is the first day of this model. I'm sure there's a lot of calibration and kinks to work out. So if you bet any of this, which I did not, by the way. This is just for fun tonight, except DFS, which is for real, but it's just a small amount. But if you bet anything on this model, uh, uh, you know, be, you that's on you, you know. F uh, exercise caution if you're going to do that. Exercise caution because uh, it's still early. It's the first night, and I'm sure there's a lot that needs to be done before I feel confident in it. So, like, no keys or anything. So, let's see how Buffalo and Miami did. I think Buffalo was up by a lot when I saw it. Uh, yeah, they won by 28. Wow. Uh, so, I know that was a loss. And I had... I think I had mostly under tonight. So yeah, under the total was uh, 148.5. It went over. Man, we're over three. And Miami. Man, so not good so far. Not good. But hey, only three games on the list. All right, Clemson and Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech won, and I know I had Clemson in the model. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, not doing good. And I had under, what was the thing? Uh, 128.5. It went under. Oh, yeah, we won a total. Barely went under. And Clemson, what was their money line? They had to be a favorite, right? No, they weren't. So it was a dog. That's fine. I'm going to do like a cumulative over here. So we are pretty much down about seven units so far after four games. Not a lot to be excited about so far, but hey, like I said, it's early. It's just, it's night one. It is what it is. Charlotte and Davidson. We had Davidson by a lot. Um, they lost outright. Jesus, crazy. Wow. My preseason ratings are not coming through so far. Right? We had Davidson across the board. They lost outright. Wow. 
I'm surprised. And we had that game under two, and it did go under, I think. So at least we won on the total. That's the best one so far. Did we have Davidson on the money line as well? Wow, what, what was their money line? Oh, minus 800. That's going to be a minus eight. Mm. <laughs> Man. I hope none of you guys bet this. Just you know, I hope you guys are just doing like me and betting on air until you can see how it actually performs. Um, but like so, this is this is all just for fun for now, right? All right. So Minnesota and Illinois. I know Illinois is up by a lot. Yeah, they're up by thirty-two right now. That's crazy. Um, ooh, it looks like we finally got a full win. Uh, so, but we had the under. Yeah, lots of unders tonight. 146 and the total right now is 136 at the last media timeout that's a, a push for now uh, so let's hope that they don't score 10 points in the last three and a half minutes yeah 146 but uh i'm confident illinois is going to win but the money line was a uh, minus 380 so equals one slash 3.8 all right making progress here Making progress. Finally got a game to be excited about. Wichita State and Tulsa. Wichita State's up by six uh, with about a minute left. And my model had Tulsa under Tulsa. Uh, the game's gone over, or the game is not, the game's probably going to go under unless it goes into overtime. I don't know. Total right now is, uh, nah, it's going to be, it's got probably going to go over. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume it's a loss, but uh, yeah. It's not over yet, so let's just uh, wait. We did have the under in that one too, right? Yep. But it's not looking good for Tulsa. Let's put it that way. Western Carolina and VCU. VCU won by 25. Who did we have? Oh, yeah, I think we had VCU here. Yep. VCU one. Did we have over? Yeah, I think this is our first over. And I think it went over. Based on that score, it had to have, unless the total was really high, but I don't think it was. Yeah, it went over. So there's a win right there. Over. Oh, even on totals now. All right, let's give ourselves a hand. All right. And then VCU on the money line. What was their money line? Uh, minus 1,600, so it equals one slash 1,600. All right, we won like hardly anything from that, but oh well. All right. Utah Valley and Utah. There's no way that game started yet. Maybe it did. It, I think it's sorted by start time. Yeah, Utah won by eight. So what did we have? All right, we had Utah Valley on the spread, so that's a win. All right, we're back to even a good spread. All right, let's give ourselves a hand. All right. <sighs> Only the money lines are doing us dirty right now. All right, under. It did go under. Yep, did go under. All right. We're we're positive on totals now. All right, let's give ourselves a hand. And Utah Valley on the money line. It was a shot on the money line, you know. It is what it is. Uh, they, only, they only lost by eight, so, you know, not bad. All right. Southeast Missouri State and Evansville. Talk about a bad – it's in overtime right now. Total is 133, and we had the over. So over, even with that, it looks like overtime is not going to help us go over. But we'll wait. It's it's close. Um, it's a close game right now in overtime, so we'll just uh, have to come back to that one in a second. But we had Southeast Missouri State plus four, so that's good unless they can't close it out and they let Evansville shoot a bunch of free throws. Over, not looking good. And Southeast Missouri money line as well we need them they're down by three so let's see how they can close over timeout georgia tech florida state that game just started Furman and alabama that game hasn't started yet all right i think we're into the games that haven't started yet yeah i think eastern washington st mary's is another late game houston baptist and rice any of these other games some of these might be added games like longwood and radford there's no way that game hasn't started yet all right, it's over. Radford won by nine. So we had Longwood plus 4.5. So that's a loss on the spread. Back in the negative territory there. 
under the game did go under so we're plus two on totals right now all right maybe my coach tempo strategy paid off and longwood on the money line a loss okay moving on i'm gonna see the houston baptist and i doubt it started yet but oh it is over so rice won by 11 who did we have we had houston baptist plus 14 so that's a win we had the under, it went over, so that's a loss. And who do we have on the money line? Houston Baptist, loss. And when are we going to hit a big money line to get back to even? All right, Texas Southern and Auburn. Texas Southern is one of those upset teams in non-conference. They, they like play all those bye games, like 15 of them, and they win like one or two, but still, it's better than some of the other teams in our conference that lose them all. All right, Auburn won by 17. Uh, so who do we have here? We had Texas, so they did not cover, so we're back in a negative territory against the spread. Uh, we had the under, and it did go under. So, yeah, total's not bad tonight for total. I mean, we picked mostly unders, but still. And then Texas Southern, the money line, that's a loss. But with keys, you wouldn't play something like Davidson minus 800. I always filter that stuff out, so anyway. Southeastern Louisiana and Texas A&M. Texas A&M won by 17. Who do we have in this game? We had Southeast Louisiana. They covered. All right. We're back uh, even there. We had under 139.5. It did go under. All right. Totals doing really well right now. I'm, I'm pleased. And then we had SELA on the money line uh, for minus one. Still haven't hit a home run. That's the thing. You got to hit the home runs. Um, like, if you take out that Davidson loss, it's probably not. The, but like, we the only we haven't hit a dog money line yet, and that's kind of the issue. Uh, the two money lines we did hit were big favorites. So, all right, North Carolina A and T and East Tennessee State. That game didn't happen. It looks like. East Tennessee State substituted North Carolina A&T with Gardner Webb. So that is a scratch. Either that or the odds thing I pulled it from was wrong. But yeah, they played Gardner Webb. All right, South Carolina State and Liberty. Liberty won by 30. We had Liberty, uh, even covering the 26, so that's good. Not a, I think they're one of the worst teams in my model is South Carolina State. I think they're like either last place or like in the bottom three and then we had over the total is 134 went over all right yeah totals plus four so far awesome and then liberty on the money line at minus ten thousand so equals um one slash ten thousand <laughs> like point oh 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 one units i mean you could bet ten thousand to win or you could bet a uh, hundred to win one unit but i'm not going to do that All right. USC Upstate, UNC Greensboro. Back in the Southern Conference. UNC Greensboro won by eight. This is another game I looked at because South Carolina, USC Upstate, very bad team. UNC Greensboro, pretty good. And I was like, wow, USC Upstate only losing by 10. I thought something might be off. It wasn't. And USC Upstate only lost by eight. So my model is pretty much on the mark there in the margin. Uh, USC Upstate covered. P we're now plus two units against the spread. Remember how bad the spread was looking at first? Uh, we're we're c making it now. Um, what do we have there? Over? Over 147. It did not come close. And then I'm sure USC Upstate on the money line, which did not cash, but still. Uh, it was worth a shot. The value is there. All right. Moving on. This is fun, isn't it? It's fun for me. Florida Atlantic and Stetson. Atlantic Sun versus the Conference USA. Stetson wins by nine. Who did we have? Looks like we had Stetson, I think. No, Florida Atlantic. That's oh, a loss. And then we had def probably under, yeah. Under 132.5. It went over. All right, we're bleeding now. And then 
no money line play, so that's good. All right. New Orleans and UL Lafayette. Louisiana Lafayette wins by 10, and we had that that was the exact margin that my <laughs> model predicted. It was 76 to 66. So New Orleans uh, plus 10.5. Oh, it covered by half a point. All right. Awesome. What was the total? 149 under. It did go under. All right. And then money line, probably New Orleans, which is a loss. Man, we have not hit a single dog yet. And we only have four games left. All right, Texas A&M Corpus Christi and Texas State is currently in action in the second half. Southern Miss and Lamar currently in action in the second half. Arkansas Pine Bluff and North Texas, probably the same thing. Yep, and Florida A&M and Austin P. It was tied at halftime. All right, awesome. So can't complain. Up two, up two on against the spread. Up three on totals. Money lines though, it is what it is. That's what happens. Like I said, you would never play an eight hundred. I would never play an eight hundred favorite unless it was part of a parlay, money line parlay. So anyway, uh, yeah. So let's go check on the fantasy daily fantasy. So George Tech is making a run. Uh, M right though he only has one block that one block I, I don't know what the deal with him is um, J Alvarado Capriva Polite Sturdivant man I am in tenth place out of eleven that's not good who do all the other people have I also have another lineup as well this isn't the only one I submitted a, a Yeah, so he has, like, the snowflake next to him because he sucks right now. Maybe he'll get it going later. Yeah, one block. That's all he has. So I'm not that far out of the money. I'm just about five points out. Let's see who they have. They have A. Polite, who I have. S. Barnes. That's the thing I don't like about Showdown is that you can't... Everyone pretty much picks the same players, so it's just a matter of, like, who got luckiest in terms of, like, who they didn't pick. That's how showdown usually that's that's what I noticed in baseball is that the showdowns everyone usually had like five of the same players and it, whoever lucked out on that sixth player that was more unique. So like for me um I was one it looks like two or three people picked M right as captain. So here's my unique players that I need to do well. Capriva um Sturdivant. I need those two to kick it up because those are the two guys that I have that no one else really has. Sturdivant and Capriva. All right. But yeah, and then let's check on my other lineup. I think the other lineup was uh, three games, which was Kansas State, Iowa State, Furman, Alabama, and one more. But I had a few Furman players in there. So this game has started, or these games have started, and I'm in fourth in this one. So let's look at who my unique players are in here. This th I like these ones more because you have more unique players because you have a bigger pool to pick from. So Primo, Gurley, Gordon. Those are really my most unique players. And I guess Bolton. I don't even know who they play, they play for. Iowa State. All right. So the other game in here, I don't know. All my players either play for Kansas State, Iowa State, Furman, or Alabama. So there's a third game, which was Long Beach State and UCLA, which got canceled. That explains it. But yeah, so I guess this is kind of like a showdown too because you don't have a lot of player, different players to pick from. So uh, yeah, also these are double ups. I'm not in any big prize pool contest because, um, you know, that's that's kind of like the slot machine of DFS. It, just, it loses you money. So uh, before I get to the chat, which I have not looked at yet, unfortunately, so I apologize. But before I get to the chat, I want to answer a question I got on Twitter today, which was, is your model going to do better than a linear regression model? So I was like, that's a good question, but I need a little more details. Uh, how simple is the linear regression model? And he pretty much said it was based off like Ken Palm stats and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, that's pretty simple. Um, and I was like, 
I answered him. I said, I think it might do a little worse at the beginning, but uh, in the long run, it should do better. Um, and, and like I said, my model is about risk. It's about taking risks. And by risks, I mean, like I said earlier, I'm betting on the individual stat method to be better than the team stat method. With that, I mean, my simulations are pretty much completely based off of 90% based off the cumulative individual stats of every team, right? So my Monte Carlo run simulates every game possession by possession, and each possession it calculates a floor lineup based on the probability that, uh, you know, a floor lineup of five guys based off a probability sample. So I basically divide the amount of percentage of minutes played that a player has played to get a probability of that player will be on the floor on any given possession. And I do that every possession. I calculate a new five person lineup every possession. Of course, the guys who play more are going to be in more possessions, you know, but uh, that's how I do it. And then out, out of those five guys, I calculate the sum of their five stats. Um, and that's how it works. And uh, out of those five guys, I calculate the probability of those, which uh, the probabilities of shooting, like if, if the Monte Carlo simulation says a three-point shot's going to happen on this possession. I calculate the likelihood of each of those five players being the three-point shooter, right? And from there, I calculate their field goal percent, uh, three-point field goal percentage adjusted off the opponent. So it's you know it's it's pretty complex, but um, I'm betting that that is better than the team approach, which is what I'm guessing. Uh, definitely a linear regression model would use, but I'm guessing that's what odd makers set their lines off to is. Team, a team Monte Carlo. Yeah, they'll be able to adjust for injuries, like take a point off here or there for a big player that gets out. But I, that's 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 what I'm betting on. So it might be a little bit unstable at first. Because, like I said, a lot of these games I simulated today, they've only played three games, so I only have three games worth of individual stats to go off of. Uh, so, But when the more, as more games are played, uh, it should get more stable. And that's why I'm saying... At first, yeah, a simple linear regression model might be better, uh, but over time, as my model collects more data, uh, I, I'm, I think it would pull ahead. Um, so that's kind of how it is. So I'm in third place now, by the way, here. Uh, M. Wright still has not... Oh, he hit a free throw, so I guess he has a point. How has Sturdivant done? Uh, I don't. He just turned the ball over, so that's minus one point, I think. And then Capriva, no change really. So I'm probably still in 10th place in the other game. So I will click here. About to head to the chat. Yep. Oh, I'm in 7th place now. Okay, I'm moving on up. All right, awesome. So I'm not, I'm not, not too bad. All right. So I'm going to click on the chat. All right. Yeah, so Peter Hoffman, I explained the Stanford differential. I explained that, and I, I, that, I, that caught my eye when I ran. I was like, something has to be wrong. There has to be like an error, a bug. No, that's, that's just how the model is working. Like I said, the odds are probably set off team stats, but the individual stats, the opponent-adjusted individual stats for Stanford and Cal State and Northridge were pretty similar. And that's pretty much how the game played out. Stanford won by 11, so Cal State and Northridge, and it was a three-point game at halftime. That's how it played out. The stat Stanford had better stats, you know, but accounting for home advantage and all of that, um, it was pretty even. But uh, yeah, I, I did a full diagnostic check of that specific matchup to make sure there was no bugs, and there wasn't. So um, that's just like I said, it's a little bit more unstable right now with only you know a few games played between each team. But I'm betting on that it's going to be more good than bad, and it was good for that game at least on the spread bet. Yes, I'm weary if it's that large. I am weary if it's that la that large. But like I said, it's just a different way uh, of b calculating things. If I was using team stats and it was that large, I would be very weary. But like I said, my model is pretty, I wouldn't say unstable right now, but it's different. And so when it's different than the status quo, you're going to have stuff like that. And you're just going to have hope that when yours is different, it's going to be right more often than it's wrong. <laughs> have I considered using Python? I use R for all my modeling right now, but I use Python for a couple things. But everything I do, my all my entire college basketball model is written in R. Yep. Yeah. 
Cal State Northridge, they're not a bad team, although they lost their best player from last year to the NBA. Uh, actually, I think it got waived the other day, but his name was Lamine Dion. And, you know, when you lose a guy like that, it can be hard, but uh, that is Cal State Northridge for you. Minnesota, you had Minnesota today? Yeah, they, this, this is, you know, yeah, they lost by, they were losing by, what, 30? So, um, by the way, Evansville won by three in overtime. So what did we have? What do we have? That game is over. It, it d doesn't look like the game ended up going over, even with the overtime. Yeah, the total is 133, and it finished at 129. But I think Southeast Missouri covered, but did not get the money line. So, one. So... ATS is overtaking totals. All right. I want to look at that uh, Minnesota game real quick. What did my model have? It had Illinois by 15. Uh, the spread was 8. So my model was projecting a Illinois blowout, and that's what happened. So looks like I was on there. Wow, Furman is up on Alabama by 15. Furman's good. Furman is good. They were really good last year, and I think they could have given East Tennessee State a good run in the Southern Conference Championship game, but they lost to their nemesis, Wofford. Uh, but Furman's a good team. I think they are going to win the Southern Conference this year. They're up by 15 on Alabama right now. And I have a couple of their players in my DraftKings lineup. Mike Bothwell. Yep, he has 9.75 points. Oh, I'm in the money now in this uh, showdown matchup. All right, so I'm two for two right now. Awesome. All right, back to the chat. You're up a lot of units today because of me, John Kim. I'm glad I could help. Like I said, bet on this at your own risk. It's still early, but uh, I'm actually pretty uh, satisfied with the results, especially after we saw those first four games and they, were, they all lost. All right, do I gamble for a living or do I have a day job? I, I don't gamble for a living. No, I have a day job. Yep, I, I have I have some videos about what I my true thoughts about people who bet for a living. Uh, I talked about it on a live stream a week or two ago, but I just remember I was at the Red Rock for a college football Saturday one time, and there's this guy sitting to my right. He just had a bunch of parlay tickets just scattered out all over his little area in front of him, and I looked over at him, you know, and I was like, "Man, that's a lot of parlay tickets," and he's like, "Yeah, this is how I eat." Yeah, he's like, this is how I eat, and I'm so I'm, I'm guessing he he bets those all those parlays to make money to be able to put food on the table, but there's no way you're gonna profit betting that many parlays. So I'm guessing uh, he wasn't very good at math. But yeah, I don't bet for I, I just think betting for a living is uh not realistic. Not saying that people don't do it, but you gotta have a lot of you pretty much already have. There's no rags to riches stories when it like you can't like have a bankroll of ten thousand dollars and just grow it and live no you already have you pretty much if you're gonna bet for a living you pretty much have to have a bankroll at, at least six figures uh to survive off of clemson law yeah my model uh is very high on clemson for whatever reason uh i noticed that when i was doing the preseason ratings and everything uh, and not high on virginia tech even though they beat villanova so I can't really square that one, to be honest with you. Yeah, that one was a head scratcher for me too. Yeah, but it's you know it's just one game. You're you're not gonna get it perfect. Illinois does look pretty good. They lost to Baylor, but yeah, they look good. Minnesota's six and zero, but who have they played? I'm gonna look at their schedule. There's no way they played it. What was Minnesota ranked in my model? Fifty-eight. So you know. 58 is actually like NIT level when it comes to my rankings. Uh, NIT level for a P power conference team. Uh, 58 for like a mid-major team, though, that's probably going to be like a 12, 13 seed in the NCAA tournament. All right, Minnesota, where are they? This is easier when I s was sorted. Okay, they're 6-0. and oh. So they beat Wisconsin Green Bay. They beat Loyola Marymount twice. North Dakota, Boston College, and UMKC. So out of all that, only Boston College would be any good. Um, and they beat them in overtime. So 
Yeah, even though they are 6 and 0, oh, my model is not high on them. I wonder why they played Loyola Marymount twice. Must have been like a tournament. All right. In that game, did that game end up going under? All right, Illinois finished at 92.65 for a total of 137. What was the total? 146. So, yeah, it did go under. Good. Wait, 92 to 65? No, that's, that went over. Am I, am I good at math? Yeah, that went over. That's a loss. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was 137. I was, yeah. All right, is that Tulsa game done? Tulsa and Wichita State. If it was a free throw fest at the end, it probably went over. All right, Tulsa lost by four. Who did we have? We had Tulsa under Tulsa. And it was a push on the total. Push on the total. What was the spread? Tulsa minus one, so yeah, that's a loss. And man, money line's just a train wreck tonight. Whoops. Uh, man, train wreck on the money lines tonight. But everything else is fine. I mean not not amazing, but better than losing. Alright, any other games we are waiting on? Let me go back to the chat. Based on how you bet Illinois minus 380, or wait, where, where did I leave off? Georgia Tech is coming back. Why minus eight? Because they're a minus 800 money line favorite. So minus eight, if you were to bet um, eight units to win one, that's how, that's how I'm calculating all these money line results. Yep. Based on how you'd bet Illinois minus 380 and VCU minus 1600, wouldn't you have only put one to win point? Uh... Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's how I've been calculating that. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Peter Hoffman. So let me fix that. Let me fix that, Peter Hoffman. You're, you're right. You're right. Um, minus one, yeah. All right, so yeah, money lines are still bad because of all these dog losses, but not as bad as it was. So right now we are up two units. I mean, kind of like. Actually, the the win should be uh the losses should be minus one point one, so we can do it unit based. So we're up one point two units against the spread. Like this is everything. This was without keys or anything like that, and zero point two units on totals, and minus twelve point seven on money lines. Awesome. Let me check on this Georgia Tech game. So it's halftime, 36-29. Has Capriva done anything? He's doing pretty good rebounding the ball. He's leading the Florida State in rebounds right now, and he's one of my unique guys. Start event, though, he he is in foul trouble, so that's why he didn't play much. And right, he did absolutely nothing. He's got to be hurt. I mean, isn't he supposed to be, like, one of their high-usage guys? I'm going to look it up on uh, Ken Palm. What's Mike? What's Wright's usage? Because for me to pick him as captain, he has to be pretty good, right? So yeah, Moses Wright is their number one usage guy, and he has done absolutely nothing. Uh, one shot, which was missed. Two free throws. He made one and a block. Like, what's the deal? Like, he had he has to be hurt or something. That it doesn't make sense for a high usage guy. I don't get it either. But anyway, at halftime, am I in the money? I'm not. I am in seventh place. How far away am I from the money? I'm only a point and a half out, so it's not over. Hopefully Wright can do something. Uh, I mean, if I'm only a point out with my captain, 
being uh, useless so far, then, you know, I don't have a lot to be uh, down about right now on that. So let me go back to... this one where I am in first place. So it looks like my DFS optimizer worked here, but that's because I have a lot of Furman guys in my lineup and they uh, are winning at Alabama right now. So I have one, I have three Furman guys and they're all doing pretty well. Um, and then I have three Iowa state guys, an Alabama guy and a Kansas state guy. So yeah, I'm in first you know, it's it's t it's a ten dollar game. You know, like I said, first day of the year, I'm not gonna go full send yet, especially with how baseball worked out. Because that was my issue with baseball is I thought my DFS optimizer and everything was gonna be so awesome. You know, I, I had it all figured out, and so I I out of the gate I was betting fifty hundred dollar double ups right out of the gate. Um, you know, I was in, and and it, it it didn't pan out. So I learned my lesson on that one. All right, back to the chat. Got a total for tomorrow. I'd really like to run the system when you get a chance. Sit down in South Florida. Uh, I'll have it up tomorrow. <laughs> That's the thing. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do it every day. I'll try to do that every day, but um, I'm going to be going out of town uh, starting next week. I'll be in Colorado, so I don't know if I'll be able to do it when I'm out of town, but uh, especially after Christmas and once I'm settled into my new place and everything, yeah, it'll be a daily thing. But I'll try to do this again tomorrow, Thursday, Friday. I can't make any promises after that, though. Can't make any promises. Am I on FanDuel or DraftKings? I'm on uh, DraftKings. Yep. Whoops. Sorry if you got. Sorry if you guys only see the chat right now. Let me switch back over to this. Uh, TC has a shot at the Big Twelve this year. I uh, I'm gonna have to disagree with that one. Um, they did beat Texas A&M pretty badly, but. You can't lose to Oklahoma at home. Not that Oklahoma's bad, but that's a winnable home game. You can, and then the game against Providence, they just look totally lifeless uh, in the paint defensively. They could not stop the other team defensively in the paint. I would. I. I. Not only do I think TCU has has no shot at the Big Twelve, but I'd be surprised if they even were in contention for the NCAA tournament. You should try this model out on the NBA. You know I want to, LA. I do. Um, the question is, do I have the time? A lot of the framework and structure could easily be ported over for the NBA. It could, but uh, I just don't know if I have the time. But it wouldn't be that difficult if I wanted to. That's the beauty of the NBA um, in college basketball is that you can reuse the same engine for both interchangeably almost just a little minor tweaks but we'll see it's it's something i've been considering but I, like i said it's just a matter of time at this point Furman looks solid versus cincy last week couldn't pull it out in the end yeah like i said i think Furman is your southern conference champion this year as long as they can beat their nemesis wofford who just wofford has their number for whatever reason What was Furman ranked in my model? They're actually ranked pretty high in my my model. What's their ranking? Furman is number sixty, so that's pretty good for a Southern Conference team. Yep, that's pretty good. All right, where's Furman here on Kempom? I'm trying to see what he has him at. He has him at seventy nine. So yeah, my model's a little bit higher on them. Yeah, they played Cincy last week. Yeah, they lost. Apart from that, they've only beat USC Upstate, College of Charleston. But yeah, that's really... I wouldn't be surprised if they run the table in the Southern Conference. Like, their only competition is probably going to be UNC Greensboro, and they're so much further ahead of everybody. And then Wofford, their nemesis, but Wofford's regressing. Um, I think their year they had a couple years ago was a flash in the pan. Kind of like that Drake team from 2008 that was like really good one year and then never done anything since. 
do I keep data from previous years or is that pretty much a scrap because of variances of players' growth? I keep the past. I, I keep, yeah, in order, Shadow 13, in order to make my preseason ratings, I had to scrape the last four years of data. Uh, but my preseason ratings are always going to use a four year uh, data set because that's a recruiting cycle. That's why I do, that's why I pick four. But yeah, I keep data. You, you have to if you're going to do preseason. For D2 teams, I don't even bother with the D2 teams. It, uh, I only My model only does D1 versus D1. If it's a D1 versus non-D1, I don't even uh, pull the box score. Yeah, if I was going to do D2, I would have to, uh, you know, that would like double the amount of work. So, yeah, that's just how it works. What is my Twitter? I'm about to type that in the chat. I think I shortchanged myself on the money. Yeah, a little bit better. Uh, what would I recommend for advanced stats? Um, Ken Palm and Bart Torvik are your places. Those are your places. Uh, but in order to actually work with them yourself, you're probably going to have to take the raw stats and convert them into advanced stats. Is there any way I can donate to support your channel? Uh, is there not like a super chat function? I've gotten I've gotten them before the super chats. Let me see. I'm gonna. There has to be a super chat, right? Yeah, there is a super chat button at the bottom. I mean, I'm that's 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 how you can do it right now. That's about the only way, Jun Kim. I would not be opposed to it if you wanted to do a super chat. How's Murray State? Um, it's a good question. I don't have the my model files. Uh, and I have it on my upstairs computer. So the only thing I can reference is my website, which didn't have everyone on it. Uh, let's see what Ken Palm has in that. It's not gonna. It's probably not gonna be that much further off from Ken Palm. Ken Palm has them at one thirteen. So yeah, I probably have them in that range. Uh, definitely, you know, them and Belmont are always going to be your Ohio Valley favorites. Um, I think Austin P. Um, might be a threat, but yeah, those are always going to be your top two in the Ohio Valley. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's pretty much awesome. It's pretty much Murray State, Belmont and Austin P. And then everybody else in the Ohio Valley. Whoops. Oh, wow. Thanks for the super chat, J. Kim. All right. Davidson tonight, 11 point favorite at home, yet loses by. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that one either. Uh, my model is very high on Davidson. It has him at number 41. Uh, what does Ken Palm have him at? That, that might be a di different difference. So Ken Palm had him at 60. So, I mean, I have him at 41. So, so far, they lost to Texas by two, Providence by one. They beat UNLV, Georgia Southern, and High Point. So, yeah, you can't lose to quad, a quad four team, which Charlotte is one, at home by 11. You can't do that. I mean, Charlotte, up to this point, lost to East Carolina, lost to Georgia State, lost to Appalachian State. So, and then, but then they go on and beat Davidson, which would be a quad one win for Charlotte. Uh, but, yeah, that was a big head scratcher. I don't get that one either. I mean, not only did they lose, but my model had them scoring 71 points. They only scored 52. That's not good. All right, let's go down the line and see if any of these games that I passed on are in the books. Give me one second. So I didn't bet the Loyola game because it was a uh, Loyola hadn't played enough games yet. All right. So Western Carolina and VCU, did we have that one in? Yeah, we do. 
Georgia Tech and Florida State is at halftime with Florida State up by seven. We have Georgia Tech on the spread. We have the over and what's the halftime total was uh, 65. So a little bit under the over pace, just a little bit under. And then Georgia Tech on the money line as well. All right, Furman, Alabama. We have th that might – if Furman can d keep doing what they're doing. If Furman can keep doing what they've been doing, they're up by – they're only up by nine now, so leads down a little bit. But uh, that can be our first money line dog hit of the night if they can hang on. They're up by they're up by 12. Mike Bothwell, who's in my fantasy lineup, just hit a three. So that's good. But yeah, Furman, like I said, don't sleep on Furman. All right, Kansas State, Iowa State. We have Iowa State on the spread, but Kansas State on the money line. Well, that's not bad news because we have Kansas State's up by 10 right now. So even if that's one of those what you call a split bet, so it's all or nothing really. Either Kansas State wins or um, Iowa State covers. So it's kind of like a reverse middle almost. So if Iowa State wins but by seven or less, uh, you lose both. But I will gladly take the plus 300 Kansas State money line and lose the, the spread bet. Eastern Washington and St. Mary's. Has that game even started? That's probably going to be... Yeah, that game hasn't even started yet. Texas Southern and Auburn. Southeast Lee, North Carolina. That game wasn't played. Liberty. USC Upstate Greensboro. Foil and Stetson. What were the games we passed on? Because they hadn't started yet. Huh. I guess we don't have a lot in the hopper then. New Orleans and Louisiana. All right, that was the last one. So Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, Texas State. So this game's almost over. Just a minute left, and Texas State is up by three. So that's good because we have Texas A&M, Corpus Christi, uh, plus 10.5. And if they can win, they're only down by three. If they can win, that's plus 475. Um, so if, if I had my TV, I'd have that game on right now to watch the finish of it and like do a play by play, but I don't. So uh, that's probably going to be a win against a spread bearing like a total meltdown in the end. Um, and then we have under 130.5. That's definitely going to happen. It hasn't even, the total isn't even above 100 right now. It's 49 to 46 with a minute left. So uh, that's probably going to be a win unless it goes into overtime. So let's not count our chickens before they hatch. All right. Southern Miss and Lamar. So Southern Miss is up by five with a minute and a half to go. We have Lamar. So it's a push right now. Lamar plus five. Lamar money line in under 133. And it's, yeah, it's not even, that's probably going to go under. So that's good. Arkansas Pine Bluff and North Texas. North Texas won by 25. What do we have? We had Pine Bluff. Okay, so that's a loss on the spread. And the total was 137. And what did we have? Whoops. It We had over, so that's a win. All right, good. And then money line. <laughs> what do we have? Did we have a money line? None. Yeah, that, that was none. All right. All right. And then what's that one at the bottom? Florida A&M and Austin P. Florida A&M's up by uh, two with uh, 11, about 12 minutes to go. Um, I doubt they can hang on, but if they do, that's a plus 700 money line. But Austin P has been, they've disappointed me this year. I thought they could be a third contender in the Ohio Valley Conference, but instead, uh, I mean, you know, no shame in losing to Abilene Christian. They're pretty. They're they're pretty good for a Southland team, and they beat Omaha and East Tennessee State. But they lost to Murray State by thirty, and that kind of like took the wind out of the sails of Austin P. I really thought they could have been a contender. Maybe they still can. But losing to thirty by your competition in the league is a uh, not good. And now they're losing to Florida A and M, who's horrible. I mean, Florida A and M zero and four, uh, number two seventy six team in my model. Yeah, um, 
I wouldn't complain if Florida A and M wins because I have you know this is all air betting. Like it's not like I'll win money, but just for pride, I guess. All right, Furman's up by twelve, and it's almost halftime. What's the total in that game? Because it looks like it's right now it's at eighty-two, so it's well it's heading for the over. So it looks like I'm going to lose a total there unless it slows down big time in the second half. All right, how's the end of this? All right, so it looks like A&M Corpus Christi is going to come up short. Yep, looks like they're going to come up short. Texas State just hit the dagger, jump shot with 18 seconds left to go up by five. So it'll take a minor miracle there for the Islanders. Second half of the Georgia Tech game is uh, underway. Is right, right took a shot, but he lost it. So, yeah, I don't know what the deal with him is. I really don't. Like, if is, is that if anyone's watching that game, Florida State and Georgia Tech, let me know if Wright's playing because based on his box score, he's not. All right, where's that Texas AM Corpus Christi game? I mean, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's gonna go over. Or under. There's no way, yeah. Unless it goes into like three overtimes, and if that happens, I'll change it. But uh, what did we have the spread at? A&M Corpus Christi plus 10, right? Like I said, one day when I'm doing these streams, I'll have like all this on this page and automatically updating and everything. All right. Plus 10.5. Yeah. Lamar just scored uh, to uh, pull it in three. So I'll, I'll go ahead and say the under is a win on that one because there's no way it's going to go over. It hasn't, like I said, it hasn't even reached 100 yet. All right, Lamar, they're coming, coming in. All right, back to the chat. Wow, well, thanks for the super chats, everybody. Speaking of Ken Palm, how much value do you put in a just efficiency margin when it comes to comparing teams? As just a quick snapshot, consider it takes SOS into account both O and D efficiency and all in one metric. So, adjusted efficiency margin is pretty much just the adjusted offensive efficiency minus defense. Um, that's all. That's all it is. Um, if you're, how do I put it this way? Um, it's not a bad way to compare teams. It's not, uh, how do I put it? Um, that is going to be like, that's a good, there's like a really easy way to calculate quick score projections with the Kempom, uh, efficiency stats and tempo. There's a really quick way to do it. Um, but that's pretty much how my model does it. Uh, only it takes SOS into account for individual stats as well. That's how my model operates, um, not just for the teams, but the individuals as well. I think that's where Ken Palm and Bart Torvik come short. I might be wrong. I might be wrong, but I, as far as I'm concerned, because I believe if they did do it, they would put adjusted in front of the stats, but I'm pretty sure Ken Palm and Bart Torvik do not adjust the actual stats outside of efficiency and tempo. Like, let me let me go to Bart's website right now, just, just to, to show what I'm talking about. Because I believe... If, for example, effective field goal percentage was adjusted, it would say adjusted like it does for OE and DE. But it doesn't, so they might. I don't know. Like, let me go to last. I, I, I'll be able to answer that question right now real quick, if, if it does or not. So if I sort by effective field goal percentage, who's at the top? Yeah, he does not adjust these stats. Otherwise, teams like McNeese State would not be seventh, for example. So it looks like they do not adjust anything outside of the efficiency metrics and tempo. Same with the players. Like all these numbers right here um, are not going to be adjusted numbers. And that's how my model is different. I adjust the individual stats as well. Every stat, except for free throw. Well, even then, hold on. I adjust pretty much every stat. Um, the only difference is that I don't adjust like shot rate, which is basically the... Uh, percentage of possessions that a player takes a shot two points and three points i split it out 
And for free throws, the only thing I adjust is home advantage. Like you're more likely to make a free throw on the road or on, at home than on the road, not on neutral floors. But it's 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 very very minor. Um, but everything else I adjust uh, fully. You don't want to adjust shot rate though, uh, just because that's more of a tendency thing. Uh, how the team plays, like, and so it, opponent strength doesn't really matter it, for that stat. Um, I actually tried to do it at first because I, I was operating under the theory that say like a team, I want to say Villanova, I might be wrong, but I think Villanova like defensively does not allow their opponents to take a lot of threes. They defend three really well and try to get you to take the two. Um, a zone defense, for example, like will give it more threes and two. So I always figured you might be able to adjust based on that, but no, it didn't work. It, the numbers were way off. So I just leave it alone. All right. Do I post these picks on any platform? Yeah, it's on my website, uh, Tour Capture. Let me post the link to my website. It's just sportsbettingtruth.com, but I'll post it in the chat for you, Tour Capture. Everyone is on the Furman in this game. Yeah, I, I, I would guess that Furman would be the square play in that game just because every – if you – I don't know. That's the thing. Like, it's kind of hard. If if you pay enough attention to college basketball, you'll probably know that Furman's the best team in the Southern Conference. You would know that if you pay attention. But I don't know how much the average person pays attention, and they'll probably just say, oh, Alabama, who everybody knows, even if they're not a bas basketball school, like – Still, it's it's Alabama versus a team that people probably aren't aware of, Furman. Uh, I think I drove by Furman when I was on my road trip a few months ago, but uh, it was in South Carolina. I forgot where, but I know I drove by it. Um, but, uh, yeah, the maybe the person who doesn't pay that much attention might bet Alabama blindly just because they're like, oh, Alabama against Furman? Who's Furman? But if you pay enough attention, you're going to realize that uh, Furman is a good team. And... I would – there's three levels. There's three levels when it comes to betting. You have your, your – you have your uh, – you have your squares. You have your square wannabe sharp squares, and then you have your sharps. The squares are, you know, what they are, the squares. You know, they're going to make square bets. The wannabe sharp squares are the squares who think they're sharps, but they're actually squares, right? <laughs> and then you have your actual sharps. So I think Furman would fall in the category two, uh, want to be square sh or want to be sharp squares. Alabama would definitely be category one and category three. I don't know. Uh, my model had Furman, right? What was the spread? Three it was it was three, right? Six. My model had Furman losing by three. So I guess I consider myself a category three person because I use you know these models that I spend hours making, but. If my model is sharp, then the sharp play, yes, it would be Furman. But I feel like Category 2 would also be on Furman as well. I'm not saying that Category 3 and 2 aren't on the same page. But, yeah. All right. Do I consider myself a sharp? I mean, I if if I'm not, I don't know who would be. Uh, I don't I don't like to pitch my hole like that because uh, there are a lot of people who say they're sharps or not. But, um. You know, like I said, this college basketball model, I mean, hours and hours and hours of work. I mean, I had to put a lot of effort. And so if that's not, if it's, if that's not sharp, I don't know what is. So, all right, Lamar, can they pull it off? So Texas A&M Corpus Christi did end up covering that game, but they lost on the spread or the money line. All right, I did have AM Corpus Christi on the money line, right? I did. So now we are up 1.1 against the spread, up 2.2 on totals, down 13.7 on the money line. Lamar, they're down by one with 10 seconds left. Looks like, what is M right? He he has to be hurt. 
He has to be hurt. He is one – like, he's – is anybody watching the Florida State game? Like, can someone tell me what Moses Wright is doing? He has to be hurt or sick or something like that. He had the highest he had the highest uh salary in that game. Ridiculous. All right. Florida AM's up by five. That could be a big money line hit for me. Kansas State up by 14. Another That's another money line opportunity. All right, Moses Wright just hit a free throw, so I'm guessing he's playing. <laughs> so he finally scored another point. This is pathetic, man. Like, maybe... Maybe Florida State's running a box and one on him, or but no, you don't do that. You only run a box and one if you uh, are the inferior team in the matchup. But yeah, I, I wish I could. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm not watching. If I was watching, I'd be able to figure it out. Have I ever looked into horses? I get that asked at every live stream, but I don't mind answering it because it lets me reminisce about my days living in Louisville, Kentucky. So. Horse racing was very big in Louisville, and everyone knew me at this TV station I worked at as a sports betting guy because I had a sports betting segment and everything. But uh, they always asked me if I'd do sports. I just wouldn't know where to start. I wouldn't. It's just, I'm sure if I really put effort into it, I could come up with something. But no, I have never looked into it on a serious matter. When do I? When do I? When do you know to post or have? When do I know to post? I don't know what you mean by that tour capture. Do I adjust my model for fantasy? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Individual stats are adjusted, so that's what you mean. How many samples do I need before something is validated? Uh, it really depends on that Philip Peddler. Uh, it, it's 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 very circumstance. It depends on the uh, you know circumstances. Uh, I mean, you know, if you're just using st standard statistics, you know, probably a sample size of 400 is probably the minimum, but getting a sample size that big for some applications is not realistic. So you have to take what you have and make do. You can go as low as 50 and have some level of confidence. All right. Wright is messing up my lineup. I think he's messing up everyone's lineup because even if you didn't pick him as captain, you probably definitely have him in your lineup at some, in some form or fashion. <laughs> My issue with horse racing is how deep it goes because I remember just looking at the, uh, the I guess the tip sheets is what they call them, you know, when it shows, like, the ho horses running in each race and, like, which races they run and everything. It's You would really have to have a pretty thorough model to, like, factor in all those horses because maybe they won a race, but they're racing against scrubs. Maybe they lost a race, but they're racing as good horses. So you you'd have to find a way to measure the the strength of a win or a loss or a placement. Sixty percent through two hundred sixty college football games. Uh, that's a very good number. Uh, is that sixty percent based on a back test, or is that based on how it's actually done? Because that could uh, be, uh, you know, if it's a back test, that's not a bad number. But if it's how it's actually done, then yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, Lamar lost by three, so they covered. Did it? And the total was one twenty nine. What was the total? One thirty three. So it went under. Good. Good. 3.2 on totals now, but we lost the money line again. Man, beating on money lines today. Just haven't none of the dogs have come through. That's the that's the issue. Man, Florida State starting to run it up. Maybe the strategy of not giving Moses right the ball isn't working.
Florida a ms up by eight. That could be a big money line hit. Any other games we're missing? Eastern Washington. Yeah, I'm not going to stay up for that. I mean, by stay up, I mean do the stream all the way through that game. But I just want to hit see how my DFS is doing. Let's check in on that. Check in on DFS. So this is the... Oh, so I was in first place here, but now I've slipped all the way to seventh because I don't know why. Like, who do the people ahead of me have? S. Miguel. Who's that? C. Mounts. Who does this guy have? So this guy picked... I mean, it seems like we all have the same... Pl I don't know why I slipped in that one. See, this is why... I stopped doing baseball daily fantasy because I just couldn't. I couldn't ever seem to find any consistency. So yeah, I'm winning nothing right now. Where am I at here? I'm in last place because my captain is doing nothing. Last place, and I'm about 13 points out of the money. That's what I get because I have. Yep, Barnes is doing all the work. I mean, I'm the only one who has Capriva, and he's doing good, but my captain's doing nothing, and all my other guys. Sturdivant, I mean, I don't know what the deal is. All right, did Wright just score again? Yeah, he did. Maybe he can get going and boost me up, but I'm surprised that I slipped in the other one because I was in first place, and I have players that are producing. And I slipped all the way to seventh. Like that one doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, who's not producing for me? Our, whoops, wrong one. I mean, I'm only, I'm only o point. I'm only one point off of the money. But our Bolton for Iowa State is not producing. <laughs> Neither is a Gordon for Kansas State. Like, that's, that's what sucks, is I have a guy who's on a team that's up by 14 that scored 40 points in the first half, and he only, he only has 2.75. All right, Moses Wright, time to show what you, show me what you got. But that would be a really big bummer if my return to DFS is an 0 for 2 night. Like picking up right where I left off in baseball. Like I could, just, I could just never find consistency for it. That was my issue. All right. What percentage of bets was a good model hit? Well, spread bets probably fifty-five percent. If it's good, you can hit fifty-five percent. Money line bets, it's less about percentage and more about just hitting more, you know, winning more than you lose. Like in college football last year, I was 93 and 130 on money line bets, but I still was up 12 units. Lamar was minus five. Oh, did I read that wrong? I thought they were plus five. Was I wrong? I will own up to it if I was. Yeah. Where's Lamar? Oh, yeah, you were right. Ah, uh, man. Whoops. Let me change that to a loss. Still above water with ATS, but uh, just 0.1. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Seventy-seven variables in horse racing, man. That sounds like a back test to me, Philip Pedler, but keep, yeah, keep testing it. Dallas Haynes, you're to so on which sport, which sport are you doing the totals for? Yeah, the GT players I have, Dave, are uh, Alvarado and Sturdivant, and they're doing nothing either. I mean, maybe they can get it going. Whoever has this Wilk, Wyatt Wilkes guy is a... Uh, 
probably doing sitting sitting well right now. College basketball totals for this season. An absolute error 13 isn't bad for totals. If your losses are an average of 11.2 and wins are an average of 14.4, absolute error. Uh, I mean, the conclusions I can make is that it's winning right now if you're 98 and 76. There's nothing to be complaining about with that. I would not, yeah, I would keep doing what you're doing with those numbers. Like, you're not going to get an absolute error below 10. It's very unlikely. Maybe you can. I mean, I'm thinking about... I want to say my absolute error in college football right now is 13, and that's for margins, so I'm sure totals is probably the same. So, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't calculate the absolute error by the, the raw number, but maybe standard deviation. If you're within a standard deviation or two, you're, you're good. Yep, I'm the same way, Dallas. I only do it if each team has played at least three games against Division One. Man. All right. Let's check on the suck. I call this the suck because it's just it's could so firm in Alabama's back up. Uh and I, it looks like I'm sinking further and further behind. I need this girly guy. I'm the only one who has him. I need him to start doing... I mean, he's doing pretty good with 16 points. And also this Primo guy, and the Bolton guy, and this Gordon guy. I need them all to step it up as well. But yeah, I'm slipping further and further away. It's, it looks like the writing's on the wall unless my guys can turn it around. But I went from first place to a... Like, Georgia Tech's making a comeback right now, but it looks like this DeVoe guy is the reason for it, and I'm pretty sure I don't have him. Yep, I'm still in last place here. Oh. Yeah, I'm only nine points off the money, but... I really need my captain, who has the snowflake next to him, to pick it up. And Parham and Sturdivant, I mean... Has Sturdivant even been in the game since the first half? You know, it's not just about guys doing stuff. Maybe it's about guys who the other guys have that I don't turning the ball over. That'll help. Oh, it looks like Sturdivant just got an and one. So, And yet, I still didn't really climb up that much. I mean, I went from being nine points off to seven points off. Well, Georgia Tech was down by 16, and now they're only down by three. Maybe if they gave the ball more to Moses Wright, um, they could uh, finish this comeback. But this one's really disappointing. I, I keep saying that because I was in first place at halftime for these games. And then the second half, for some reason, I slipped to ninth. What is going on? Nick Gurley. Man. I don't like it at all. Did Florida State just call a timeout, I'm guessing? Florida and ms up by five with three minutes to go. Furman's lead is slipping. They're only up by seven. All right. I can't wait till I get my studio set up and I can actually be watching the games instead of having to look on the stupid game tracker. All right, Moses Wright's at the free throw line. The thing is, is that I have him as a captain, but I think everyone else has him as a uh, a player. So, really. Um, how do I put it? 
Like everybody has him. It's just that only three guys have him as a captain. So really the the net gain in him doing anything is only going to be half of what he normally would. All right, Moses Wright. So I am only four points out of the money now. <laughs> Screw this. I wish I knew what was going on in the other lineup, though. Still in ninth. Who has Darling Stone DeBar for Iowa State? Probably everybody but me. He doesn't have him. He doesn't have him. Who has him? I'm trying to see who has him. Darling Stone DeBar. Because he just hit a point he just hit a shot for Iowa State. It looks like oh this guy has him. He's the only one who has him. Walker G S. Yep. This one's slipping further and further away from me. Scotty Barnes. I don't think I have him. Man. P value is 0.03. Yeah, that's that's a good p value, Philip. Yep. Yeah, back testing isn't perfect because you're you're right, Tom. That's a that's the issue with back testing is that if you have the ability to like test against what the stats were that specific day that you're back testing on, you you it might work. But otherwise, yeah, you're testing against the same data your model's built on, so it's always always going to be good. Yep, Ewan Gray just said it perfectly. Only if you're feeding it the exact variables, you'd be feeding it if betting on today's game. Yep, absolutely. Do I have David Bradford in that game? Because he just turned the ball over. So I'm just, you know, gosh. This is just, it's frustrating how uh, I went from first to ninth, like, very quickly. I thought my lineups were good. But then again, remember I said at the beginning of the video, I did really rush the optimizers. Um, by rush, I mean, like, I finished it maybe five minutes before the stream started. So maybe I have some errors or something. So Noah Gurley just hit a couple free throws. I'm going to have both of them up on tap. And I'm the only one who has him, so that's good. But that just dro drop in the bucket. Rasir Bolton, do I have him? I do, yes. He just hit a layup. He needs to get it going. Seton Miguel, I don't have him. What are my picks tonight? Just look at my. I mean, I didn't. I don't have anything official. I, I'm just. I'll post a link to my website, Philip. You can see which games I was on. But I, I have a little spreadsheet that I'm tracking right now. Uh, all the results. All right. M. Wright is starting to do stuff. He has nine points now, but yet I'm in last place. What a bummer. Last place. That's how baseball usually... I, in, in baseball DFS, I either got first place or last place. There's never an in-between, but I usually got last place more than first place. All right, so I'm in eighth here and last here. And it's all thanks to Parham and Sturdivant. 
Parham. Useless. Zero points. <laughs> Sturdivant, I mean, at least he has five points, but... I, I have too many snowflakes. Who does this guy have? Okay, he has Barnes, who almost everyone had as captain, and Wright, and DeVoe, who is killing it for Georgia Tech. He's the only one who has him. Walker. Yeah, he is no dead weight. I have a lot of dead weight. What a letdown. Ninth place here. Oh, but I'm in eighth now. Okay, I'm climbing. But I, I think I'm I don't think I'm gonna cash in either. I think I'm too far out. I think I'm too far out. Bummer. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do, Ewan Gray, eventually. I'm gonna have a live updating result thing. I just haven't had time. And I probably won't get to that until after Christmas. How do I use my model for fantasy? Well, I do Monte Carlo simulations. Uh, individual stats. Monte Carlo simulated. How much longer am I waiting to start betting college basketball? Until I can trust my model. If I don't trust it, I, I w won't do it. Like, I built the model out, but that doesn't mean I'll use it. I just need to... I need to... Something... I need it to show me... Uh, that it can, you know, help help me win. <laughs> All right, I'm in seventh now. I'm slowly climbing up. I'm only 11 points off. And I say only. That's a lot of ground to make up. It really is. And I'm still in last right here. All right, Florida a and I'm going to put this game away. Eastern Washington and St. Mary's has begun. That was another game that I saw on my model that I was very skeptical. Uh, yeah, I had St. Mary's winning by 17. I thought that was way too much. But it is what it is. So we'll have to wait and see. Total 137. It's about one fourth of the way through and the total is at 34 so it's a little bit under that pace <laughs> who's Juwan Gary probably somebody that everybody has except me Probably. Mm, I guess no one has him. <laughs> All right, so Florida a ms up by two with 30 seconds to go. Uh, Moses Wright misses a free throw. Not that it matters. 100% of the people have him, but even as a captain, every little bit helps. I am slowly climbing up. Slowly climbing up. I mean, I'm only eight points out here, even though I'm in last place. You never know what can happen. <laughs> everybody has a polite. And almost everybody has Jose Alvarado. So I need Capriva who's doing pretty good, but I need these two guys, or I need Sturdivant, really. Sturdivant. Does anyone have Quinterly? 
because he just got an assist. I don't see him. Oh, yeah, this guy does. So half the people have him who just got an assist, so that's not good. I feel like my model is better with more games. Like, this had two games to pick from, and the showdowns only have one game. But if you have a bigger pool of players to pick from, I feel like that's where my model can do better, separate myself a little bit more. Because like I said, that's kind of how it works. Like, especially in showdowns, everybody pretty much has the same four or five players. It's really like how, how good your uh, player that no one else has does. Last place. So if I just want to go fit, like lose one, win one, this one looks like the better. I don't know. Both of them are looking pretty bleak right now. What's my programming background? I am self-taught, 100% self-taught. But I, I, I started to teach myself programming when I was like 12, so it's not like I just, you know. It's kind of what I did in my free time when I was a kid, when I wasn't playing outside or playing sports. I created my first kind of rating power rating system when I was 16? 16. Yeah, I... I R, Python, and VBA are my main three. <laughs> TikTok? No, I don't know about that. Why Monte Carlo rather than multiple linear regression decision tree or something else? Uh, that's just my what I because I feel like I feel like that's the best way to get everything. I feel like so. I'll, I'll answer that. I feel like that's the best way to get DFS numbers. If it was just that's honestly the main reason I did a. Monte Carlo model to begin with. Otherwise, I was just going to stick with my multiple linear regression model. <laughs> yes, Tom. Tom Lubati, yes. My model includes an average DFS score for each player based on the simulations. I could track that for accuracy. I don't see it. Yeah. I'm going to, you know what? Thanks for letting me know. I'm going to write that down. Track DFS for accuracy. Looks like Florida AM is going to win, by the way. And yes, the model can work for live betting. I do plan on adding that feature in, like I said, when I have a actual studio set up with my computer and everything in my new place. I will do that, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I had a... If you actually followed my Twitter account maybe three weeks ago when the season started, I was originally doing my linear regression model that I was using the past three years. But then I was like, I really want to do DFS with this. And uh, that's why I did a, did a Monte Carlo. Um, yeah, it looks like Florida and is going to hang on here. I, awesome P man. That, what a disappointment. I really thought they would be a contender this year to the uh, Belmont and Murray States of the world. But yeah, let's go ahead and put that in. Florida A and M. I know they covered. What was the total? It's at one forty six. Yeah, it went over, and I had over. Awesome. So this was a clean sweep. Awesome. Amazing. Plus seven units on them. Even with that plus 700 win, I'm still minus 7.73 on money lines tonight. So which games are we still waiting on? Let me go down the list. Georgia Tech and Florida State. I'm pretty sure I'd, what, GT there? GT over GT. And then 
Furman, Alabama. I have Furman under Furman. Eastern Wash or Kansas State, Iowa State. I have Iowa State over Kansas State. Eastern Washington, St. Mary's. I have St. Mary's uh, over St. Mary's. And then that's it. Yeah. Wait, Southern Listen. Yeah, we got that one. Southern Miss and Lamar. So yeah, uh, just waiting on four more games. I'm I'm so disappointed with you know I I understand it's only two a sample size of two but I'm really disappointed with the uh, how the DFS has turned out tonight. I was hoping I'd get at least one, especially not a last place finish. But yeah, when everybody has Scotty Barnes as their captain, who's totally kicking ass. Um, and I don't. I, I, I backed the wrong horse. But like I said, it all comes down to Sturdivant, who's done nothing. Can't forget Parham either. Who are my, uh, yeah, like, I, I I have all the snowflakes tonight. That's the kind of the story of the night, isn't it? The snowflake crew. Am I going to be streaming regularly? Uh... That's a thing. Uh, I'll do a college football video tomorrow, but maybe I'll shift over to my uh, college basketball afterwards. But uh, I might do on Thursday. But Friday, all the way through Christmas, um, and then a little bit after, it might be... Let's see, what's Friday? Is Friday is the uh, 18th, right? Yeah, so Friday the 18th. I might not be back streaming maybe not until after the 18th uh, after the 17th really probably not until at the earliest i would say probably december 29th at the earliest but yeah i'd like to i'd like to do this more i my my vision is to have like a s automatically updating spreadsheet and everything and just kind of talk and actually have a TV in front of me so I can watch the games as they're happening and discuss them. Do I have any good tutorials for data scraping? Um, there's probably some on YouTube. I use, I scrape an R and I just use the read HTML functions. It's it's kind of scraping's kind of like a trial and error thing. I'm not great at it, but I'm good enough to get the job done. I'd like to learn how to scrape JavaScript, but right now I can just scrape HTML. But I'm sure there's plenty of good Python and R scraping videos on YouTube that you can watch. I I don't know if I could do a tutorial on it. Like I said, I'm not great at scraping. I'm good enough, but I wouldn't want to teach good enough. I'd rather you learn from someone who actually teaches you how to do it right. In order to do DFS, you have to isolate the independent variables that most click predictly, closely predict DFS points. Wouldn't the easiest way to do that be through regression model? You're probably right on silence majority, but I do a Monte Carlo. Um, it's not that I discovered a Monte Carlo simulation most accurately predicted DFS. I just figured that would be the easiest way for me to do it. 
but if you could predict the independent variables, uh, I mean, if not a Mar Monte Carlo simulation, though, I mean, that's the thing. I could, who is it? Tom, whoever said to uh, track my DFS simulations and everything, I I'll do that. Maybe I can isolate independent variables there and do like a hybrid uh, linear regression and Monte Carlo. Yeah, Ewan Gray, I'm a data scientist, but I don't have the data scientist formal education. So if I was applying for jobs and they'd see that my degree is in broadcast journalism, they're like, hey, they would probably thumb their nose at me. There's a lot of snobbery when it comes to stuff like that. Like for me, because I've interviewed and hired people before, for me, it's about can you get the job done or not? I don't care what your background, I don't care what your degree is in. I care, can you do it or not, right? Time to look at the disappointment of the night. Oh man, I slipped a tenth place here, and I, I, yeah, there's no way I'll come back. Last place, yeah. What a what a letdown. What a letdown. Last. Place. <laughs> I don't know if I don't know if I'll enter in the one million dollar contest though. Udemy, yeah, Udemy is a good resource. Last place, picking up right where I left off in baseball. I was a last place mainstay in baseball DFS. Like I said, it was always all or nothing. I'd either be first or last. There's never an in between. At least the betting. This is the bright side of the night, the betting. Man, Georgia Tech made that comeback, but now Florida State starting to pull away. The disappointment of the night. Yeah, I think I think I'm I think I'm pretty much I don't I don't see any chance of me coming back in either of these. <laughs> Definitely this one. There's only a minute left in this one. So yeah, this one's this one's done. So my only hope is a miracle here, but like I don't see this one happening either. What a disappointment. <laughs> oh, well, it's only two contests, but I was hoping at least, you know, to get the bad taste of baseball DFS out of my mouth. But nope, that's going to have to wait. That's the thing. Models can be underwhelming. My baseball model, I spent so much time on that, and it... It was a, uh, it was, I wouldn't say it was underwhelming. I would say it was, it was, it wasn't terrible from the betting, from DFS perspective. Yeah, it, it didn't pan out, but from the actual bets, you know, it was hit or miss about 
even Stevens, which, you know, you, it's better than losing, but it wasn't anything amazing. But I'm going to – after college basketball is over, and uh, usually I uh, like to spend April, the month of April getting the baseball model ready. So in the month of April, I'll go back to it and make some changes. Yeah, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty much gonna write this one off. I just don't see myself making up a 19 point gap in either of these games. I just picked the wrong players in both. That's kind of the, that's kind of the s struggle. How do I put it? That's kind of. I don't know how to phrase it. Um, when a when teams have only played so many games, it might be a little bit harder to determine. I mean, this player right here who only has four points for me, he was only 3800 bucks, so it's not like he was projected to do anything. But like I said, it's all a matter of this guy who's in first, who is his cheap players? Like, he didn't pick anybody that low. His cheapest player was this guy right here, and he has 20, and then this guy right here is 15. Like, I picked the cheap players so I could afford a guy like this, 8200 and afford a guy like this, 7400 The guy in first, his he only has two guys over 7000 whereas I have one, two, four guys over 7000 right? So he decided to go with a bunch of middle-of-the-pack guys. I decided to go all or nothing, and his approach worked. Got to tip your cap. Yeah, it looks like GT is not going to cover. What was the spread in that one? Eight? Yeah, I don't think they're going to cover. And they're not going to win. But did the game go over? Oh, it's going to come down to the wire. It depends on what Georgia Tech does on this next possession. <laughs> So if Florida State makes this free throw, it'll be 134. And then it really just depends on what Georgia Tech does. So they missed their shot. Yeah, that's it. It's going to miss the over by one point. That sucks. So this is a all across the board loss. Furman, though, looks like they're going <laughs> to. Looks like they're going to hang on. Yeah, my baseball model was pretty intricate. It really was, and that's that's why I was kind of that's why I couldn't fix it. Uh, I, that's why I have to wait till the off season to fix it because it was a lot of moving parts. Um, it was fun though. I, I will say it was fun watching it play out. But there was one thing I that I knew had to be changed, and so I'm gonna have to go back and change that in the off season. Yeah, I use a player level model. That's what I like to do. Once you've gone player level, you can't go back. Although you can't really do that in the NFL, in football though. Uh, I don't know if I use predictors because my baseball model is Monte Carlo, so I don't use stuff like that stat, like X uh, on weighted on base average or anything like that. It's 100% Monte Carlo, so I just convert everything to percentages and then simulate it. All right. 
is there a miracle in these two games to turn around this horrible daily fantasy day? <laughs> Not horrible, but, you know, going 0 for 2 after. Like, I went on a very, very cold run in baseball. Like, ice cold. I just could not win. I could not win. And I and I gave it up. Um, so I'm like, maybe I can get the taste out of my mouth by winning at least one. But nope, this is right where I left off. I think that Long Beach State UCLA game getting canceled hurt. Because, like I said, I feel like the bigger the pool of players I'd pick from, the better my odds are. Because there's going to be more variance in there. <laughs> at least my Rasir Bolton guy is at the free throw line right now doing something. But I don't know if that's going to be enough. Not if T. Harris and A. Gordon are going to keep sucking, as well as J. Primo. Speaking of Iowa State basketball, I'm going to talk about them real quick. I'm going to talk about Iowa State basketball. So I was never a big fan of their coaching hire, Steve Prohm and Fred Hoiberg left. Uh, and I lived in Iowa when they hired him. So I knew the reaction of the fan base. Um, really what – How do I put it this way? There's Steve Pro went undefeated at almost went undefeated at Murray State in 2012, and yet he it took him three years after that season to finally get hired by someone else. I was like, there's probably a reason that uh, teams are passing on him. I just don't think he's that good of a coach, and I think that's I was I have been proven right based on his tenure at Iowa State because. Uh, <laughs> I, I just, you know, I just, I just don't think he's a good coach. That's how I put it. And, but Iowa State fans, when they hired him, they're like, oh, man, he's going to be so good. And I'm like, pump your brakes, man. I don't think he's going to be that great just because, you know, like I said, there's a reason it took him took someone so long to pluck him out of Murray State. Uh, I think, you know, I think he's an okay recruiter, but I don't think he's a good X and o, X's and O's guy. And that's kind of, you know, I feel like he just gets out coached, to be honest with you. And when you can't pull in the recruits to overcome that, it can be a hard, it can be hard to uh, work your way out of that. So I feel like, I feel like if he loses to Kansas State at home, which it looks like it's going to happen, I, his, I'm surprised he, I'm honestly surprised they brought him back for the season, but I think that would definitely cement his fate. Yeah, you can't lose by double digits to a team that just lost to Fort Hayes State. You can't do that. Yeah, it looks like Alabama's making a little bit of a run here. Yeah, Alabama's making a run here. Just at the, the wrong players for that are scoring right now for Alabama though. <laughs> Furman Furman's timeout. They're only up by three. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing with Iowa State. Jay is that. The co X's and O's isn't there coaching wise, and they just haven't been able to pull in the same recruits that Hoiberg was able to get. But even even then, it's Steve Prom didn't do anything with good players like Tyrese Halliburton. So Ty Tyler Harris, do I have him? Yes, I do. All right, finally, my T Harris guy did something. Finally. And he was assisted by Rasir Bolton as well. So I'm only 12 points down now. Can I pull off the miracle comeback? Yeah. Illinois is definitely um, 
they're definitely, I think they're for real. And it's been a while since you could say something like that about Illinois. <laughs> Gosh, when was the last time they had like a good team? I would say 2006 when they still had D Brown. And they lost to uh, Washington in the second round in the NCAA tournament. And they have not been the same since. They never should have gotten in the tournament in 2007. That was an absolute joke that they got put in that year. And then the wheels kind of came off for them. They kind of had like a dead cat bounce. Uh, they did make the tournament in 2011. Um, and then they made it with John Gross. But yeah, they are... Finally, I would say, I guess back would be the right word to call it. All right, both of the games in this fa fantasy contest are in timeout right now, but I'm making a little bit of a push, but I don't think it'll be enough. I could really use more Nick Gurley scoring. He, I'm the only one who has him, and that's my best bet. But Alabama has all the momentum right now, and it'd be nice if Jay Primo could be a part of that, but he's not. Who's Duke play tomorrow? Yeah, they had Myers Leonard in 2011, right? Or was that somebody else? Was that Tisdale? I know Illinois is known for having, like, tall white guys. At least that's how I know them. All right, Duke tomorrow is playing Notre Dame on the road, but not like home and away matters this year. Dimitri McKamey, yeah, that was 2011. Yep. <laughs> Dimitri McKamey, I remember. Mike Tisdale. They lost to Michigan in the first round of the Big Ten tournament that year. <laughs> Quarterfinals. Yeah, Ken Palm has Duke going 14 and 10. All right, Austin Montgomery. I have all my NBA stats in Excel, but I'm trying to figure out how to pull players on the same team together and put them against the team they're playing that night. Any ideas? So Austin Montgomery, that is really where Python or R would help out because you could use the join functions. But yeah, if you're going to do it in Excel, you'd probably just have to do um, a macro or something just to, because you don't have the join functions in Excel. But I would just use a macro to, I guess, combine the players on the same team against the team they're playing that night, if you can. But the join functions are really well for that. That's how I do it with my Monte Carlo. I join the uh, tables. I take the the uh, yeah I do I use I use the hell out of join functions in R. Whether it be SQL, R, or Python, the join functions are very helpful. Receiver Bolton made layup. All right, the lead has widened because. The wrong players are scoring and doing stuff. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to finish this comeback. I don't, but we'll see. Not, th I don't even know if you would call it a comeback. I don't think I ever, like, really. I was just in first place and just dropped like a stone. Noah Gurley just got a rebound. I guess that's good. That's worth a point and a half. So now I'm only down by 11. But then Mike Bothwell turns the ball over which will take some points away from me. Man, whoever the Shackelford guy is is just tearing tearing it up for Alabama, and I bet everybody has him except me.
Who has Herbert Jones? Everybody but me, I bet. I'm like holding on hope, even though I know there's no way I'll come back here. Rasir Bolton just got another assist. But yeah, I'm I'm 18 points out of the lead now. How is how are these people making these? Oh yeah, it's because this Herbert Jones guy is doing all this work. Clay Mounts, he's everybody but me has him, and he has 28 points. I mean, if you take if you take him out of the equation, I'd probably even steep. But yeah, everybody else has clay mounts except me. <laughs> yep, that's all she wrote. Yeah, what a letdown. So I'll stay on the stream until this Furman game is over, and then I'll call it a night. <laughs> What number would I consider a home edge for an NBA team? Well, you have to calculate that. Calculate the... Uh, yeah, av if you're just doing it on final scores, calculate the difference between the cumulative mean of away scores and home scores. Yep. It's not a... The reason you weight most recent games more, you know, is because teams change as the season goes along. Players get hurt players arrive that weren't playing earlier so yeah it's just uh, teams adjust so it's always a good idea yeah it takes more work and everything but it uh it helps yeah i'm gonna go ahead and close the draft kings there's no way i'm gonna come back now so it's now it's all up to just how the bets turn out So I'm minus 0 0.1 against the spread. I'm plus 3.1 on totals and minus 8.73 on money lines, even though I had that plus 700 hit on Florida A&M. <laughs> All right. Yeah, these games are moving pretty slow. I might call it a quits now. I appreciate everyone for tuning in. Too bad I couldn't get a DFS win tonight, but you know it is what it is. I'll I'll be back tomorrow. I'll do everything again tomorrow. Not not I won't. I'll do a college football stream tomorrow. But uh, as far as the picks on my website and everything go, uh, that'll be up tomorrow. So I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Thanks for the super chats. Those of you that gave them. <laughs>